today we are visiting a special little place. We got up super early at 5 in the morning and check it out. This is where we are. Angkor Wat, Cambodia. inside Angkor Wat and this is the largest religious structure in the whole world. So this is my very first time visiting Angkor Wat but Sam over here has been to this place a whopping four times. World traveler much? <laughs> so how is your fourth time here different from the first, second and third? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well the temples are certainly still as impressive as ever but so many more tourists here than when I first came. It's, I would say tripled, quadrupled, maybe even more than that. It's just unbelievable how many people are sharing the experience. This is actually a Hindu temple that was dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu and the temple was built by a Cambodian king who helped unify the country and to also spread the Khmer influence across Southeast Asia. One of the most impressive things about this temple here is actually the massive moat that surrounds it. It's one of the first things you notice as you're coming up to the temple. several options for booking tickets to visit the temples of Angkor. We went with a three-day option and that was $40, but you can also go with a one-day option, two-day option, or if you really love temples, seven days. Wow. But I imagine that's quite pricey. A good time to come to Angkor Wat is actually right at lunchtime because a lot of the tourist buses and tourists are out having lunch or are at that point in the day templed out which means they're, they're really hot, they're tired, they're sort of, they've seen enough temples for the day. So if you want uh, an alternative time to come, definitely consider coming around you know, between say 12 and 1.30. Coming back for the fourth time was amazing. I never get tired of this place. But one funny observation I have is that I noticed that any families dragging along bringing their children, <laughs> the children really didn't seem to be enjoying this as much. They're just dragging their feet. I think it has a lot to do with the heat and humidity outside right now. It's just, it is really, really hard to be walking around and not sweating profusely. I really enjoyed getting up early and coming to watch the sunrise at Angkor Wat. I thought that maybe the experience wouldn't feel special because there are literally hundreds of people also here at that time of day, but it felt kind of like we were sharing the moment together, so I really enjoyed it. Welcome, Welcome to, to Bali, Bali Indonesia. Indonesia! After spending nearly a year traveling in Southeast Asia, we couldn't leave without first visiting Bali. 
we decided to take a two week trip to the famed island and split our time between Ubud and Saner to explore as much as possible. During one of our first nights on the island, we attended a Balinese fire and trance performance. This dance and music drama originated in the 1930s, depicting stories from Hindu literature. Ubud is the art and cultural capital of Bali, and we enjoyed spending a few days here. Our mornings in the town were spent visiting the various temples, browsing through markets, and soaking in the surroundings. We also had a chance to visit the Tagalalang rice terraces. They were lush, green, and reminded us of our time in Korea because Sam's apartment overlooked rice terraces. Bali is mainly Hindu and the island is home to many temples. During our time in Bali, we visited the Elephant Temple, which is best known for its menacing cave entrance. We also visited Gunung Kawi, which is nicknamed the Rock Temple. The Rock Temple gets its name because of the 10 shrines that were carved into the rock wall. They stand 7 meters tall and are a true sight to behold. Well, I'm supposed to sprinkle water on my head, so here we go. During our tour around the island, we stopped at a lookout point where we saw the impressive Mount Batur looming in the horizon. Mount Batur is an active volcano, however when we learned that it was open to hikers, we decided we were up for the challenge. Bali is a great jump off point for exploring some of the surrounding beaches and islands. Trips to Lombok, Nusi Lembongan and the Gili Islands are very easy to arrange. There are plenty of water sports to choose from including snorkeling, free diving, scuba diving, surfing and even kayaking. Ubud is home to the monkey forest where infamous little macaques roam freely. The monkey forest is home to over 600 monkeys who over time have lost all fear of man. The monkeys are not shy and will approach people and even climb onto their bodies if they believe you have food. If you're feeling adventurous and would like to feed the monkeys, you can purchase bananas right at the entrance of the monkey forest. One of the highlights of our time in Bali was climbing Mount Batur for sunrise. The morning of the hike, we got up at 2 in the morning and were driven to the base of the volcano. Armed with a trusty guide and flashlights in hand, we began the steep climb that would take close to 2 hours to complete. We took plenty of breaks along the way, but once we finally reached the top, we were rewarded with a rainbow colored sunrise.
After all, we really enjoyed our time in Bali. It may not have been the quiet paradise that's depicted in the movies, but it offered culture, natural beauty, and it was a great place to relax. So today we are taking a fun little day trip outside of Chiang Mai. We are visiting the Elephant Nature Park, which is about 60 kilometers outside of the city. And this is a, an elephant rescue and rehabilitation center, so we're going to be showing you around. So this center is also a refuge for a number of injured and abandoned animals, such as dogs, cats, water buffalo, and others. So we have a bucket full of fresh fruit and on today's menu for the elephants are bananas and watermelons. So that was my first time touching an elephant and their skin is surprisingly coarse and hairy. So right now the rescue center is home to 37 elephants, 32 of them are female and 5 of them are males. And these are Asian elephants which vary from the African elephant. The African elephant is actually a lot larger than the Asian elephant and they also have much bigger ears. Most of the elephants on site have been rescued from the logging, tourism and begging industry. Time of day, the elephants are now being bathed. at the Elephant Nature Park has been phenomenal. We've really enjoyed having the opportunity to feed, bathe and interact with all of the elephants and it's a great alternative to doing the trekking where you're just sitting on top of the elephant and they're working. This way you get to spend time with the elephant in its natural environment, feeding it and just having a great time. have made it to Luang Prabang and this city has quickly become one of my favorites here in Southeast Asia. This is the cultural hub of Laos and we're going to show you a few of the things you can do around town. So when you're visiting Luang Prabang, it's really easy to stick to the city center. There's so much to do and see there. But if you have the time, Come outside and explore the outskirts of the city. Come check out the more rural sections. Right now we're going across a bamboo bridge and we're going to see what's on the other side. Lead the way! Because this is 
is a very small city, it's really easy to find yourself in the countryside. So that's exactly what we've been doing, just wandering down rural areas. And we even found a dog to, to join us for the walk. Bright and early for a biking tour around the city. We picked up these bikes for 20,000 kip, which is $2.50, and we have them for the day, so we're going to be cycling around. Let's see what we find. When comparing Luang Prabang to other cities in Southeast Asia, there are some major advantages. One of them being that there's hardly any traffic here. It's a wonderful opportunity to take out your bicycle and just explore. You can go down the main roads, you can go down the side streets, and you're not going to have to deal with cars and other bicycles or even pedestrians. Luang Prabang is very pedestrian friendly. In fact, there are so many different little back alleys and lanes to explore that it's just a great idea to wander about without any sense of direction. some fantastic views in the city so one of our recommendations is to enjoy a meal by the river which is what we're doing tonight another thing you'll want to do when you're in Luang Prabang is to visit all the temples around the city this morning we are visiting Wat Chiang Thong and it's one of the main temples in Luang Prabang. It is also known as the Golden City Temple and it really has some impressive glass mosaics so you'll want to wander around and take some photos. Twenty thousand kip to enter which is two dollars and fifty cents American and like most places, it's good to come early because it starts to get busy during the middle of the day. Now it's time for us to get a little bit of exercise. We're going to climb up 328 steps, up Mount Fusi, which is actually more like a hill, for the best views of Luang Prabang. to reach the top of this mountain is 20,000 kip which again is two dollars and fifty cents and it's kind of cool going up because you go up one way and then you come down the other side of the mountain so you get to see different views along the way and how could we have a list of things to do in a city without focusing on the local cuisine we're here at our favorite rest in tamarind we've been here so often it's literally our home away from home and we're going to show you a few of our favorite dishes Platter. So this over here is a coriander pickle. Next we have an eggplant dip, tomato dip, we have a paste made from buffalo skin, we have some seaweed chips and then some vegetables that we can use with the sauce. So let's dig in! And that all goes together, of course, with our sticky rice. Ooh. So Sam is going to demonstrate so for this us. This is how you eat it, you just kind of put together a little ball like that. And then you can pick a different dip. I'll try the buffalo sauce here. Put it together just like that. Pop it in your mouth. Delicious. So this is the second plate we've ordered. Again, here we have a vegetable pickle. This is a pork salad that also has banana flowers. We have a pork sausage. Here is some buffalo jerky, Sam's favorite. Oh yeah. And over here we have some little lettuce rolls that are stuffed with different dips, different sauces. So we'll be trying those. 
We've ordered so much food, we almost forgot about this next dish. But it's time for me to do the honors. I'm going to unveil our steamed fish, which comes wrapped in a banana leaf. And it's called mokpa. Let's see what's in here. It's like opening a present. I know, it's like Christmas on a plate. Oh, wow. There it is. Oh, you can see the steam <coughs> coming off of it. Mm, that's going to be good. And when the sun goes down, it's time to go shopping. We're at the tourist night market and we're picking up souvenirs. One thing that Luang Prabang is known for, it's for its alms giving, which happens at 6 a.m. every morning. This is where monks collect alms of rice from kneeling locals and tourists. on how not to be a total wanker at the ceremony. First, don't use your flash, don't blind the monks. And secondly, don't chase them down. You see people doing both of these things and it's infuriating. If you love to eat like we do, and you can't leave Luang Prabang without taking a cooking class. Today we're at the Fusi Market and we're picking up ingredients before we start preparing our food. Sugar, love cooking, like Thai food. You see, you taste Thai food, it tastes milky, creamy, smithy, because they add lots of coconut milk, lots of sugar. That's why the food tastes like that. Love food when you eat, tastes lots of herb, lots of texture. This is love. Food. <laughs> so I'd like to point out the salmon are, are making the exact same dish. This is his sauce. <laughs> This is mine. What are you missing? Just about everything. <laughs> so here we have our buffalo salad. So we, we stir fried some buffalo meat and we also added bean sprouts, there's banana flowers, we have string beans, hot chilies and mint leaves. So we're going to be rolling this up in lettuce leaves. It's kind of like a little fresh roll. Today we are standing in front of Malaysia's most iconic buildings, the Petronas Towers. There are lots of different vantage points around the park so that you can get your shot with the Petronas Towers and this is one of them. The Petronas Towers took six years to build and they were the tallest building in Asia until Taipei 101 took them over. And I've been to Taipei 101 and these are more impressive. So these towers were designed by an Argentinian architect named Cesar Pelli. Represent. Represent because why? Where? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I grew up in Argentina. <laughs> there you go. The double-decker sky bridge here connects the two towers together. It's quite awesome.
Jade in Chiang Mai, and today we are heading to the Saturday Night Market. Well, we're still a few blocks away, but I know we're close. You know why? Because I can smell the food. What's you got there? So I got myself a twist potato, which is a lot like the tornado chips we used to have in Korea. Looks like it's all season. Mm. And? Nice, barbecue flavored. And you're gonna be sharing that. <gasps> you're wasting the chips. It's like blueberry cheese and rice. It's gonna be messy. <laughs> Snow ice cream with blueberry sauce drizzled over top. Mm. How articulate. Mmm. Mm. So what did you get? I've got some pan-fried dumplings, very similar to the Korean goon mandu that we often had when we were living as teachers in Korea. So let's see if these are as good. They look hot. <laughs> Someone found his favorites here. So what started as just a little snack out here at the market has turned on to a full-on feast. I've got dim sum and fried spring rolls. Looking good, and I got this German sausage. Thingy. Very good. And in case we didn't quite have enough to eat, a sweet little dessert treat. So it's banana egg roti with lots of chocolate and condensed milk drizzled over top. Welcome, Welcome to, to Singapore. Singapore. We've got less than 48 hours in the city and we're going to show you as much as we possibly can. With limited time taking down to visit the world's most prosperous city-state and busiest port, we set out on foot, bus, subway and boat to cover as much ground as we possibly could. Singapore has often been given the title of the sterile utopia. However, after traveling around chaotic Southeast Asian hubs like Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, and Saigon, it was a welcome relief to visit a mega city that was clean, orderly, spacious, and pedestrian friendly. One of the top highlights was visiting the various districts, including Chinatown, Little India, and Kampong Glam. Hopping on a traditional bum boat offered a unique perspective of the city as we were able to learn more about its colorful history on our guided tour. One of the highlights was drinking Singapore slings at the Raffles Hotel where the drink was invented. 
paying 27 Singapore dollars allowed us to sip on this wonderful cocktail and throw peanuts on the floor. Singapore is impressive by day but really shines at night. Many of the standout landmarks have a completely different look when the sun goes down and the bright lights of the city emerge. When it comes to street food, Singapore ranks favorably with Korea, Malaysia, Taiwan and Thailand. Hawker centers offered up a spread of Asian delights that were heavy on flavor while being light on our wallets. In order to cover as much ground as possible, we purchased a hop-on, hop-off bus ticket to get around the city. Being able to get on and off whenever we wanted was a real bonus as it helped us preserve our walking leg. Although we saw many of the most popular attractions such as Merlion, Marina Bay and the Fullerton Hotel, it was the adventures we had wandering around that formed the greatest impressions of the city. Overall, our time in Singapore was distinctly memorable. Hopefully we'll have a chance to come back again soon to explore more of this impressive 21st century city-state. So this is the hillside town of Pai. It's about three and a half hours away from Chiang Mai. And this is where we've been spending the weekend. So we are staying at the Pai Chan Cottages and this is our private little bungalow. So let's go have a look inside. Hey, 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 come on in. This is our little humble little room here. You can see we got a nice big size bed. Mosquito net over here, which fortunately this time of the year we haven't had to be using very often. Because it's freezing at night. Yeah, it's freezing so that luckily the mosquitoes have all died. But the best part about this place are the views. Check out this. Rice fields. Cute and wrinkly. Look at that little nose. We've only got a few days left here in Thailand, and I've been hearing from friends raving about Pai for years. And I've always put off coming here. And this time I said, There's no way we're gonna leave Thailand without coming to Pai. And now I understand what all the fuss is about. This place is wonderful, it's one of the most relaxing towns I've ever visited and we're going to show you around and you're going to get to see firsthand why we love it here. What are you doing? Oh, I couldn't be any more relaxed than in this hammock right now. At this rate, I don't even know if we'll get into the town. <laughs> people come to Pai is just to relax and totally chill out. I mean a lot of other destinations you go to visit temples, you go to do other types of things, but here it's just enjoying the scenery, wandering around, swinging on a hammock. Those are the top things to do and I'm loving it so far. So we seem to have found Hippie Central just across the river. There's a cool little bar called Sunset Bar and it can be reached via a bamboo bridge. Shall we check it out?
That was awesome. We crossed that rickety old bridge and then we came to some really cool looking guest houses and now we're here in the fields. So one of the draws to Pai is being able to explore the countryside and yesterday I rented my very first scooter. It only cost me three dollars a day and I got a helmet with that. Um, and it was a great way to explore. I mean, I thought it was going to be kind of tricky riding it for the first time, but it was a lot of fun. Well, you did well, didn't you? And it opened up a lot of the surrounding areas yeah. that, that would have been tough to reach by foot. Aside from chilling out and relaxing in Pai, one of the few things that we actually really want to do is to take a trip over and visit the hot springs. So we're here in Pai visiting the hot springs. This is the 35 degree pool and I'm swinging like Tarzan. Well, not exactly, but I'd like to think that. <laughs> and that giant white Buddha over there is something I plan on visiting tomorrow morning when I wake up. Can't swing. I say? need an assistant to swing me. Sam, come swing me. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, Sam! Sam, no! Oh my god! <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, I just want to get you on the hammock. Do you want me to go flying? No. Okay, just go back on and say something. You fetch me a drink. So for the next two days, we are doing a tour of Halong Bay. So here we are aboard our ship, our lovely home at sea. So we're going to give you a tour of the place. Lounging on the deck. How are you enjoying the views? Yeah, okay. <laughs> lots of activities while we've been at Halong Bay. There's been kayaking and exploring caves and this morning we're spending a bit of time at a private beach. Okay so Sam you are revisiting Halong Bay for the second time, yes? Indeed I am. Okay so tell us what's been your favorite part this time around and how has it changed? Well, it actually hasn't changed too much. This tour is quite similar to the one I did before. Uh, previously, I did a three-day tour. This time, we're doing a two-day. Two days, I think, is plenty. We've done a lot of different fun activities. I've just enjoyed being on the boat, all the gorgeous scenery, the mountains, the Karst Mountains. Well, this has been my first time to Halong Bay, so obviously, what has impressed me the most is the scenery, because it just looks out of this world. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. So I've really enjoyed just hanging out on the top deck, reading a book, checking out the views, and also the food aboard has been really nice. Next, 
we're going to show you our room on the boat. So, hello. Hello. Cabin fever. <laughs> okay, we've been here maybe half an hour. It's already messy. Hey. I blame it on this person. No. So today we are setting out on a two-day hike through Safa and we are just walking through the town. We've picked up a few more people who are joining us and we've already picked up some, some local buddies who will be walking with us, it seems. What's your name? hike is going to be divided into three sections and the first village that we will be visiting is called Lao Chai. That's about eight kilometers from where we started out and we're two kilometers into the trek so far. It's getting really hot and I'm sweaty so let's keep going. <laughs> Tell us about the scenery. Scenery here is stunning. Unbelievable. Everywhere we walk. Here, there's been a bit of a landslide that's blocking the road into the town. <laughs> it's like, hey. <laughs> I thought I heard a waterfall down there. It turns out it's just a river. <laughs> Still impressive. So after several kilometers of hiking, <laughs> we're finally approaching the village of Lao Chai down below. So we are about to cross this bridge into town and it is not for those who have a vertigo because there are no railings on this bridge. After two hours of hiking, we've reached our first destination point, Lao Chai Village. And it's time for lunch. 
And I'm pretty hungry. How about you? I am starving. I can't wait to get there fast enough. It's just over there where the bridge is. That's Lao Chai.